guys, so it's me, Nicolette Mashile, and today I want to talk a little bit about the most trending thing in South Africa right now, and it is called WhatsApp Stock Fells. My goodness, I think I have done interviews left, right, and center on WhatsApp Stock Fells, and it's just a buzzing topic right now in South Africa. By the way, if I am speaking funny, I do have my braces on. You might not be able to see them because they are invisible braces. Um... Yeah, the financial commitment to put these braces on was quite heavy on me. So I am excited that my teeth are finally going to be straightened after 30 years of me having this mouth of crowded teeth. But um, that's a story for another day. I'll do a video of my journey with me getting my teeth fixed and how much it is costing me financially, how much the investment is, right? But remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody who's certified and registered with the FSCA. And speaking about being registered with the FSCA, there is no... Let's start this. In South Africa, you are not allowed to create a fund and promise people returns without your fund being registered with the FSCA. Okay, the FSCA basically is the watchdog that watches over what is happening in the country when it comes to money matters. So it oversees financial services providers. These are companies that offer financial services. They all have to be registered and have what is called an FSP. Now that I've said that, I want you to remember this information when I get to the part that I want to talk about, this specific part that I've just mentioned now. So let's go back to what is a WhatsApp stock fail. But before I go into a WhatsApp stock fail, I would like to remind you guys of a little thing that we had in South Africa called Triple M. Now, if you do not know, this is how Triple M actually worked. So Triple M had a website. You had to log in and you had to register a profile, right? You registered this profile and then they would say, you'd say how much you can donate, basically. So let's say you want to donate 2,000 Rand. You would then donate 2,000 Rand. You would need to um, send it via EFT. And after you've sent it via EFT, you had to upload the, uh, the proof of payment either to the website or you were actually told who you are donating the 2,000 Rand to. They would give you that person's number or that person's banking details, the person's number and their banking details. And you would send your money to that person and then you would need to send them the proof of payment, right? And then they will come and verify on the site that yes, Nicolette has sent me the money that she said she would send. Once you have done that and your name is on green and you've been cleared, you then have an opportunity to go back to the site and say, I now need 3,500 Rand. And then somebody else who's now recruited by the site or by other people, there used to be these things called managers or leaders or something like that. They would then come, right? They would recruit more people and add more people to this thing. And then you would say, I need 3,500. And they would get either one person to donate 3,500 to you or to give you uh, maybe two people that can send you maybe 1.5 there and 3,000 and 2,000 rand there to make you 3.5. That is how Triple M actually worked. So why did Triple M actually bust? Triple M busted because Triple M is what is called a classical pyramid scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme. Basically, it's a scheme that looks like this. The person at the top makes the most money, right? And then, the P and then it filters down. As you can see, it goes lower and lower. So if the person at the top is getting a thousand rand, it means that the people maybe in the middle might be getting maybe 200 rand and the people at the bottom are getting a little bit more or a little bit less right so for a pyramid scheme to actually survive it needs to add more people so you've got to keep recruiting people and recruiting people right that's what a pyramid scheme is and that's what triple m essentially was so let's talk a little bit about these new modern whatsapp stock files right now the whatsapp stock file how it works is you would start a WhatsApp group. The person that is starting a WhatsApp group then allocates a number to each person that's in the group. So let's say we allocate the numbers based on the basis of people entering the group. And let's say we start off with three people. It's Nicolette, it's Lerato, it's Tabo, right? Nicolette, Lerato, Tabo. Nicolette is number one, Lerato is number two, Tabo is number three, right? Each person will join with 200 rand. Now, the person who gets all the 200 rand is the person who is number one. And currently, it's Nicolette. So, Nicolette will get 600 rand. She takes 400 rand and keeps it for herself. And then the 200 rand is the joining fee again, right? Then what Tabo and Lerato and Nicolette need to do is they need to go and recruit more people. Sometimes, 
these guys who are at the top are very clever they don't even do any recruiting right you would recruit more people so let's say we each recruit one person now there's three more people that are joining our whatsapp stock file right now what they do is that they shift the numbers then they say there's number one, two, three, still Nicolette, Lerato, and Tabo, one, two, three. Then they will add in Jabu, Tandi, and Temba, right? So Jabu will become number, number four, Tandi will become number five, and Temba will become number six. And then they will split the groups, right? So when they split the groups now, the numbers shift up. So basically, uh, Nicolette was number one, Tabo was number two, Tabo will go to number one. So they'll take all the odd numbers and put them in one group and all the even numbers and put them in one group and shift the person up. So the person that's at the top is the person now that's going to get all everybody's 200, 200 rands that they're joining fee basically. And then they get to keep the, money, the, the, the excess money and then the person at the top joins again and they recruit more people sometimes they don't even split the group sometimes the group stays as is you just need to wait for your turn to become number one now that is where it gets a little bit tricky because what essentially is happening is that it is essentially kind of like a stock fell but the problem is that it's not really a traditional stock fell the way we know it so again let's put that on the side and go back to what a traditional stock fell is Stock fells were created by our parents in the olden days, and might not be my parents, might not be their parents' parents, but it's somebody's parents that created a stock fell. And they basically created them because the financial services sector was very, very hard to enter, right? So, for instance, what they did is they created what is called saving schemes, they created burial schemes. So, there's a thing called libilo that they still do in Bushpark Ridge, right? It's a wheel, basically, the wheel has got different groceries that people need to buy when somebody dies in somebody's house. So, that's kind of a, another stock fell, right? So, basically, it was a burial society. So, if, somebody, if, if your mom is part of a, a, if she's a paid up member of the society and somebody passes away in your family, then everybody will take money from the burial society plus money money that they would contribute from each family, maybe an extra hundred rand, and they would give it to your family to be able to bury their deceased, right? So that's basically what stock fells were. They were actually there to help each other out. Now, the thing about stock fells is that you knew there was a definite number of people that you knew were part of the group. So let's say, for instance, there is seven people in the group. You knew that the seven people are the seven people that this thing is going to rotate on, right? So you always knew what was going to be happening. And you knew that you had to give your money to somebody one month, then another person another month, then another person, and wait for your month. And what generally our parents did is that they used to choose the month where their birthday is or the month where they might need money in that month. So essentially, you're not making money in a stock fell like that. The traditional stock fell, you were not making money. In actual fact, you were helping, people were helping each other. Why? Because the money, there was no way the money could gain any interest because it was not invested into a specific thing. It was pure cash that was circulating in a group. That's why a lot of young people now are discouraged to join actual Marodi uh, San, stock fails, because they are not for profit making. They are actually for helping each other. Because look at it this way. If you are contributing a thousand rand and you're contributing for six months, you're contributing every single month to a different member. Now, remember, we're talking about you guys being seven in the group, right? And you're contributing a thousand rand every single month. It means that you've actually saved a thousand rand every single month. It's not, it's, it's, you didn't do anything magical. You just took your money and gave it to somebody based on good faith and the fact that they are part of your stock fell. And when it is your turn, all the other six people will also contribute their thousand rand that they've been receiving from you for the last six months and they're going to give it back to you. That's basically what a stock fell is. That's why now we're asking people to try and modernize a stock fell and actually attach an asset to it. Now, why is the WhatsApp stock fell a pyramid scheme? Number one, you've got to keep recruiting people. So if you keep adding people, it means that if somebody is to pull out, someone is going to not make the money that they've actually put in. So they're actually going to withdraw less. But it's difficult to know that you're going to withdraw less if you've been putting in your 200 rand and you've been putting in your 200 rand you've been putting in 200 rand you've been waiting to become number one one person pulls out and all of a sudden you are getting back 800 rand but you think oh but i only put in 200 no you've put in 200 for how many weeks that's what you've got to remember right that's the important part and the thing is yes you might have put the 200 rand once 
because there's another version of it where you just put in your joining fee and you just wait to be pushed up to becoming number one. But that is then dependent on more people being recruited. So let me explain how that works. So let's say, for instance, there's now the six of us, right? And I've, I've, I've gotten my number one chance, so Lerato gets pushed to number one. Lerato doesn't have to join again. The people that are new have to join and they have to pay their 200 rands and then all that money will go to Lerato. But we have for us, for this thing to actually make sense, we've got to keep recruiting more people because let's say next week there are no new recruits and you are number two, you are waiting to be number one. There are no new recruits, nobody's paying a joining fee. So what happens? Bob's your uncle, you've just been scammed. Then they tell you, no, wait another the second week. Guys, we've got to recruit more people for this thing to really work because if we don't recruit more people, it's not going to work. You're waiting in week two. It's your turn to get money because now you've been pushed to number one and nobody recruits anybody. Because now, tell me, after I've received my money, let's say we are down to the person who was originally number six on the list and the top six people have already received their money. What encouragement do they really have to go and recruit people? What, recruit, what encouragement do they really have to go out there and actually recruit more people? These are some of the things that you've got to ask. So it's, it's very important for you to remember that anything that has a recruitment that is attached to it, a recruitment that is attached to it is very dangerous because those people are not legally bound to stay in that WhatsApp group. They can actually pull out whenever they want to. Yes, somebody will say, but things like Tupperware also has a recruitment or whichever other direct marketing. The difference between direct marketing and a Ponzi or a pyramid scheme is the fact that the direct marketing actually has a product that you are actually selling. Yes, you want to recruit more people because essentially what you're doing is you're creating a small onion of business of resellers that come under you that are going to be selling under you. You've got no contract with them to stay as resellers under you. So if they really wanted to leave and become their own resellers, they could essentially do that because they have access to the product. They can go directly to the likes of Avon or to the likes of Tupperware and create their own account and be able to resell those products. But when it comes to where there is no actual product and the product is the people, the people's money is the actual product, you then have to keep recruiting people. And the unfortunate thing is that there is no contract that says to those people, they've got to give you back that money when they join or you will eventually get that money. And that's the dangerous part of this whole thing. But over and above that, let's say, for instance, you are number one and then you just see Coco has left the group. Jabu has left the group. Tandi has left the group. Temba has left the group. Yeah, you are waiting. You thought this is my week. Oh my goodness, I'm about to get my money because I'm waiting and people are busy leaving the group. Where are you going to begin to actually find those people? Because you do know that this is South Africa and some people's numbers are not even recorded. But over and above that, if you go to the police station now to try and open a case against a WhatsApp group or a WhatsApp stock file group, they're going to tell you, no, but my friend, you volunteered into this thing. You literally volunteered into this thing because where did you sign a contract to say you're going to actually make your money back? Did you sign a contract? Also, what is the FSP number of this WhatsApp stock file that you actually joined? So even FSCA cannot actually help you because basically you volunteered. You walked in there and said, please scam me. I am so vulnerable. Please scam me. I have nothing to do with my money. So guys, I'm just saying, be very wary when you are joining WhatsApp stock files, especially if they've got a recruitment thing. The other thing that you've got to think about is that psychologically, quick money is addictive. So a lot of people say to me, I just want to try it once. I'm just going to do it once, Nicolette, make my money and I'm going to leave. The reality is you are not going to leave. That's how a lot of people got scammed with Triple M because in actual fact, there are many people that made a lot of money with Triple M. I know somebody that withdrew 2 million rand from Triple M, right? But the thing is, she then went back. She became greedy because that's what we are. Our human nature is to want more, especially when you didn't put in a lot of effort to be able to get something. So these things are very addictive. And unfortunately, you know, if it, it, for me, I would advocate for WhatsApp stock fills. If people made their money and they took that money and channeled it into something else that can make them more money, that is stable, that they know is legally protected and they can get recourse for it. 
So if you made money off a of WhatsApp stock file, you make your eight, you, I mean, some people say they make 8,000 rand. Let's say you make your 5,000 rand and you go open a fish and chip shop or you go buy that fryer thing to open yourself a business efficient chop, uh, fish and chips thing. Then I'll be like, okay, no shop, you're doing something with that money. But a lot of people, they blow that money. The reality is a lot of people, when they make that money that easy, it feels like free money. So they blow that money. And when they've blown it, they just sit in there like, Maybe let me join another WhatsApp stock file or let me just keep starting new WhatsApp stock files so that I can actually scam out of people out of their money and then just leave. Because that's how it is. Quick money is really addictive. Why is this thing not an investment? Number one, an investment invests in an asset. So if you are saying you are investing in an asset, even though it is cash, cash is an asset. But your cash needs to be sitting on something that activates it to actually become an active asset. When you guys are doing WhatsApp stock fills, it is not an active asset. So basically, you've got this passive asset that basically is dormant because it's just circulating around a group. There is no position for it to actually grow, right? So your money is not really growing in reality. What is actually happening is that you're just getting money from other people. That's number one, the reason why it's not an asset. I mean, not an investment. Number two, when you are investing, you need to give your investment time and you are able to plot how your investment is going to perform or react depending on certain market circumstances, right? Now, how do you even begin to explain to a six-year-old how you make money off a WhatsApp stock? Well, it's just simply saying, we're giving each other money. And there have been arguments from people saying, yeah, it's the traditional banks are trying to make you think that a WhatsApp stock fell is illegal. No, we're not saying it is wrong. What we're saying is it is illegal because the law in the country says a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme is illegal. So it, it doesn't matter what you, how you want to look at it. At the end of the day, it is illegal. Whether you like it or not, it is actually illegal to run a pyramid scheme. And if it is illegal, it means that if you have a loss or if you incur a loss, it means that you will not be legally protected. That's literally what it comes down to. Whether it is right or wrong, whether it is changing the status quo of traditional banking, that's a whole conversation on its own. That's a different conversation on its own. On an ethical level, it is wrong because it, it, not everybody who is part of a WhatsApp stock file actually understands how this thing works and what their rights are and what, their, what rights they do not have. That's why on an ethical level, it becomes another issue of does this thing really, really look out for the interest of everybody that is part of the stock fell? That's what you need to think about it. Now, on way, psychologically, as I've already explained, Quick money generally is very dangerous money because quick money is blown money. Why? Because it feels like free money, right? That's as simple as that. And the reality is that a lot of people right now who have done these WhatsApp stock files, it would be very difficult for them to pinpoint what they've done with that money. Why? Because they just think, ah, I will go back again. It's the same thing with a lot of people when I ask them, why haven't you started investing? They say to me, ah, no, I'll try again next month. My salary is going to come in, so I'll give it a try next month. It's that thing of knowing that money is going to come again. So if you've done a WhatsApp stock fell and you have not burned your fingers, it means that you're going to go and try and do it again because who wouldn't want to make an additional 1.2 after just putting in 200 rand, right? That's the reality of life. So again, it's up to you to decide whether it is a gamble that you would like to take or a gamble that you don't want to take. But the most important thing is knowing what it is that you are doing. It's like playing amatize there by the streets. It's like gambling. It's like betway. It's like betting on dipera, betting on horses. It's like betting on soccer. It's like betting on rugby. It is a gamble that you are deciding to take and there are no guarantees to it. So I'm not going to sit here and condemn what a stock felt. I'm saying know what the law says and know that you might not have recourse if you do incur a loss when it comes to what at stock fails. Obviously, as the financial bunny, what I do encourage people to do is to invest in investments that they understand. I would rather you take that money and go put it in cows or buy a chicken, buy two chicken, a male and a female chicken. Let them breed and make your money. Mwah.